All right, let's get started. Um, first of all, thank you everyone for joining this webinar today. My name is Agnes Bonner, and I'm going to be uh, the speaker today. I'm going to introduce Microsoft Search in Office 365 and what's new there, what we do have there, and what's coming in the near future. Uh, first of all, some logistic information. The webinar is hosted by Zoom. Uh, I can answer your questions at the end of the webinar. So if you have any question, feel free to use the Q&A box down there in the Zoom uh, area. Uh, just hit the Q&A button, enter your question, and I'm going through on each of those questions at the end of the webinar. But of course, you can enter your question at uh, any time uh, while I'm speaking. Um, yes, uh, my name is Agnes Moller. And I work with uh, Search Explained, a uh, consulting company headquartered in uh, Budapest, Hungary. We have clients all over the world, uh, in the US, in Western Europe, also in Singapore these days. And I personally work as a consultant, as a managing consultant of Search Explained. And in a nutshell, what I do is I explain how Search works in SharePoint and Office 365. Uh, I do trainings, workshops, and also consulting. Uh, I have been a Microsoft MVP for SharePoint, Office 365, and Office Service and uh, Services for 12 years now. And right now, I am in London, United Kingdom, speaking. Uh, I spoke at a conference for the I uh, ISKO uh, yesterday. Uh, but I am happy to be here and uh, do this uh, do this webinar for you guys all around the world. Uh, I'm going to share uh, the slides with you. I get your email address because you had to enter it when you registered. So in the next 24 hours or so, you can expect an email from me with all the slides uh, and the whole presentation uh, that I do uh, today. Uh, about Search Explained, uh, we are a small company focusing on consulting uh, and we also do custom development for search, uh, search components for SharePoint and uh, Office 365 and we have clients all over the world and the list is growing. Uh, so we are very excited about working with really interesting international uh, clients. So uh, today's agenda is basically seems to be quite simple and I try to make it really simple. First of all, I'm going to uh, give you an overview of uh, Microsoft Search, what it is, how it works, what makes it work. And also I'm going to talk about a little bit about uh, the Microsoft Graph and how the Microsoft Search uses the Microsoft Graph and all of those uh, backend things that are needed for Microsoft Search to make it work. And after talking about the present, what's available, of course I'm going to do, I'm, I'm sorry, of course I'm going to do a demonstration as well, not only presentation. So I'm going to do a live demonstration of everything I'm speaking about uh, for the present. After that, I'm going to introduce what's coming, uh, what Microsoft has announced, uh, primarily at uh, SPC in May in Las Vegas, uh, and also the timeline as much as we do it uh, today. And I'm going to close this webinar with some practical uh, tips and ideas of how to be ready for all those changes because it's a very dynamic environment. It's a very, very dynamic place to be. There are a lot of changes in Office 365 in general, but also uh, also in search. So it's super important to talk about change management and user adoption and in general how to be ready uh, as a search administrator, how to be ready uh, as an end user as well. So this is the plan uh, for today. So let's get started. First of all, let's see what Microsoft Search is. Um, 
when you use Office 365, I'm pretty sure that each of you knows this feeling that you just upload a lot of content to Office 365, you create a lot of documents, your organization has millions and millions of documents, and the users still feel lost when they want to find something. And this is a very common feeling. Uh, and uh, it's not just you, it's not just your organization, this is really a common uh, experience. And then, of course, everyone wants to use search and the users expect magic from search. The users just expect it to work, uh, but I have bad news, search is not magic. Search does what you tell it to do and what you configure it to do. Of course, we have some default settings, of course, we have some default configuration, but it's not a magic. It, it can be configured, it can be updated, it can be modified, and therefore it can do what your users really need. Uh, to make it really work, um, we have to do uh, a bit of uh, historical uh, a historical view of uh, how we've got where we are today with Microsoft Search. So in uh, 2008, Microsoft acquired a company uh, which was called uh, uh, FastESP, and FastESP was a company headquartered in Oslo, Norway, and it was um, an enterprise search uh, company with an enterprise search product, and Microsoft acquired this company with the intent of integrating it to SharePoint to provide real uh, enterprise search features in SharePoint. Those days, what we had was SharePoint 2007. The next version of SharePoint was 2010, but the integration between the fast ESP and SharePoint was not finished yet by the, this time, uh, and therefore, uh, we had a separate product which was called Fast Search for SharePoint 2010. You had to install Fast Search for SharePoint 2010 separately, you had to license it separately. So it was a separate product, but what you could do those days was if you had SharePoint Server 2010 Enterprise, you could configure it to use the fast, uh, fast for SharePoint search engine and get the results from this smart search engine. But as I said, they still were separate products. You could just configure them to work together. By the next version of SharePoint 2013, the integration was done. So as soon as you install SharePoint 2013, um, you had the big enterprise search en uh, engine integrated, you didn't have to install it separately anymore. Uh, and also this was the time when SharePoint Online was born. So the cloud world uh, was born, we, an organization started to use SharePoint Online more and more. And then of course we have newer versions of SharePoint than 2013 by today, we have 2016 and 2019. But I have to tell you that from search perspective, 20, SharePoint 2013, SharePoint 2016, and SharePoint 2019 are the same. The search features are the very same. So if you read any blog about SharePoint 2013 search, if you read any book about it, if you watch a webinar or online course, whatever about SharePoint 2013, the same can be applied to SharePoint 2016 and SharePoint 2019 search. Of course, there are other new features, there are additional features, there are improvements, but from functional perspective, search is the same in each of those uh, SharePoint on-prem versions. The only difference is in scalability. Uh, in SharePoint 2013, you can have 10 million items per index partition, in SharePoint 2016 and 2019, you can have 20 million items per index partition, but that's the only difference from the perspective of search. So, what's in the cloud? Because obviously, today's focus is the cloud. 
with Microsoft Search. So first of all, we can have a hybrid search when we use also when we use the cloud as well as a SharePoint on-prem. So this is an option, and this is an option that uh, many organizations use. But beyond this uh, hybrid uh, search option, Microsoft also uh, developed a new feature, a new component beyond behind Office 365, which is called the Microsoft Graph. Early it, it was called Office Graph, so if you have ever read this expression of Office Graph, it is the Microsoft Graph, but with its former name. And Microsoft Graph is being used in many applications in Office 365, including Dev, for example, uh, also many Exchange features uh, use Microsoft Graph, SharePoint features, more and more SharePoint features use Microsoft Graph, and what is called the modern search in SharePoint also uses Microsoft Graph. So Office 365 search is based on the Microsoft Graph, the modern search is based on Microsoft Graph. However, um, it's not all. So Microsoft, when we talk about the Microsoft Enterprise Search uh, market, we can, we, we can and we have to mention more than just SharePoint. So first of all, uh, we have Azure Search in Azure, which is a service as a, a search as a service, uh, and Azure Search is based on Elasticsearch. I'm not going to talk about Azure Search today, but you have to know that it does exist, that it is there, and it is a feasible and viable option for many, many use cases. And also, we have Bing as the Google of Microsoft, as a friend of mine told a couple of days ago. So Bing is the public web search engine by Microsoft. And also Microsoft introduced Bing for Business, uh, where you can see results from your enterprise integrated into Bing results if you are logged in to your Office uh, 365 tenant. So we have all of those options and you might ask, what is Microsoft Search? And where is Microsoft Search in this picture? So basically, Microsoft Search is the Office 365 components all together with the goal of providing a unified uh, search experience across Office 365. Even about a year ago, if I did a presentation like this or at a, a session at a conference, I could show you at least nine different search experiences in Office 365. With Microsoft Search, the goal is to unify and to consolidate all of those experiences so the users are not confused by all those nine different experiences, but instead they have one consistent user experience, although uh, the search is always context sensitive, so the results might be different, but at least the user interface is uh, similar or it is the same and it's much easier to communicate it and much easier to adopt it as an end user. So Microsoft Search is basically everywhere. Uh, it's already in office.com, it's in uh, SharePoint Online, it's, it's coming to the Office applications, it's in Bing, it's also coming to the Windows uh, desktop client. So if you do a search on your Windows uh, desktop, you will get results from your Office 365 tenant in the near future. But instead of just talking about and showing you screenshots, let me show you a demonstration of uh, Office 365 and what we have uh, there and what options we do have there. So basically, uh, I have this demo tenant and um, I have a site on this tenant where I have a document library. This uh, site is called Events and I have a document library here and in this document library I store all my presentations from the last, I don't know, 11, 12 years. 
And if I click on a year, I organize uh, the presentations into folders based on the event itself. And if I go to this folder, you can see I use some metadata like the name of the event, the year of the event, and the location of the event. And especially this is the presentation I am presenting to you right now. So basically, this is a very simple uh, document library on this site. And if I go to the home of this site, uh, you can see that I can see this most recent documents here. I'm, go I'm coming back to this uh, a little bit later, what it is and how, and what it does and how it is displayed. But talking about search and Microsoft Search, let me switch back to the SharePoint home. So this is the SharePoint home for this tenant. And you can see this search box on the top of this site. So as soon as I click here, I immediately get a suggested content, even without typing in everything. So this is a zero query suggestion list. And this is personal. I get different suggestions as you do if you log into the same uh, tenant based on my previous activities, based on my role, based on my, uh, based on my a history of what I have been working on recently. If I start doing um, very here, of course I get suggestions for that query. And again, this is personalized based on the Microsoft Graph. So if I click on show more results here, you can see that I have sites here, different, uh, various sites, and if I scroll down, I can see documents here, I can see news. Uh, so all different kinds of results here. And, or I can switch to files where I can see the documents only, I can switch to sites where I can see the sites only, etc., etc. And if I open up this uh, folder, uh, then no, this is not a, uh, sorry. So if I open up this uh, document, I can see more details about the document, but everything, everything here is out of the box. Uh, and I cannot, today I cannot uh, customize it. On the right side, I can see all those filters for the file type and loss modified time if I'm on the files vertical. If I switch back to all, you can see the only filter I have here is the last modified time. It is really important today, but that this experience, this default Microsoft Search experience cannot be customized today. It is coming later this year, but it cannot be customized today. So let's move forward and switch back to my events site. I do have the same uh, search box here. If I click on the search box, I get suggestions again. But this is this search box is context sensitive. What does it mean? All of those suggestions are from this specific site. Why? Because I am on this site and by default every search box on top is defaulted to a current site. So you can see that I have this search page here. I'm going to uh, show it to you in a minute. I have the presentation from today and I have some other presentations here. If I do a search here for marketing, If I do a search for marketing, uh, I have uh, results from this site only. And you can see all of my results are actually presentations here. So probably I use this word marketing or I do a marketing example, a marketing demo in each of those presentations. But more importantly, everything, everything on this result set is from this site. 
and you can see that I have the same last modified time uh, filters here. If I switch to files, uh, I have the file type and last modified time uh, filters. So basically, the user experience is the same. However, search is context sensitive, so it's limited to this site only. If I switch to OneDrive, for example, still on the very same tenant, uh, OneDrive is becoming the file center for Office 365. So you can see the real OneDrive files here, but at the same time you can see shared libraries. And for example, this events uh, site, which I used here, uh, and the document library on this side is basically displayed in my OneDrive as well. So more and more, uh, OneDrive becomes the file center, the central file experience for Office 365. If I do a search here uh, for marketing again, uh, you can see that I have only one result here because today OneDrive, although all those libraries, all, all those shared libraries are being displayed here, if you do a search in OneDrive, it gives you results which are documents stored in OneDrive. So this is the only document that is a result for the query marketing that is a OneDrive document. It's a it will be changed soon. So you will get all the files results very soon. Uh, this is uh, what Microsoft is committed to, but today you get results from OneDrive. So once again, if you go to SharePoint Home, you get results from all over your tenant. Uh, if you go to a specific SharePoint site, by default you get results from that site only. If you do a search in OneDrive, you get results from OneDrive. And I could show you many different uh, other examples. For example, a search in themes shows you people, uh, files, and conversations from themes. But uh, instead of that, uh, one more thing that I would like to show you is Bing. So I am in Bing now. You can see the URL, and I am logged in. If I do a search for marketing here, um, you can see I get all those results from the public internet. But also, I have this Microsoft search bar here, and if I click on show results from my organization, I can see uh, a uh, group, a distribution list here, marketing campaign, but also I can see other types of results here. I can see groups, sites, files, themes, and Yammer. If I switch to files, for example, you can see uh, some of those documents are from are stored in SharePoint, some of them are stored in OneDrive, but also what is really interesting in is I can see Teams conversations and Yammer conversations here. So once again, I went to Bing, I am logged in to Office 365, and I can see results from inside my organization. This is powered by Microsoft Graph. Again, this is powered by uh, the Graph in Office 365. Of course, this is a private thing. So only your users can see those results, and this is not a security leak or whatsoever. However, from adoption point of view, this can be scary for some users. But still, this is an option in, uh, in uh, Microsoft Search. So those are basically the big picture of Microsoft Search, but digging a little bit deeper into it, I would like to show you some other examples and some other uh, 
other use cases in Office 365. So the screen right now is a classic search in Office 365. As I told you, the modern search experience cannot be customized today. Um, however, we still have the classic search in Office 365, and actually it is still used by most of the organizations. So if I do the same search for marketing, for example, you can see this is the classic search page that everyone knows, either from Office 365 Classic Search or from on-prem uh, SharePoint. So <laughs> we still have this option, this classic option, and of course if we can customize it, we can create custom refiners, we can customize how the results are being displayed, etc., etc. If I switch to events, that uh, page displays results from my events site. So this is a filtered uh, um, result set and you can see that I can filter by the year of the event, by the name of the event and the location of the event. So I use custom refiners here. It's still everyone, uh, everything, sorry, everything that I have ever thought about how to customize search can be applied here. However, we have some other options already. So this one, the class, the, sorry, the modern search cannot be customized uh, yet. Not on the global tenant level, not on a site level, this cannot be customized yet. Uh, however, there are various options of what we can do. So first of all, we have these most recent documents. Uh, this is a web part. Uh, actually, uh, this is, it is called a content highlight web part, or sorry, highlighted content web part. So if I'm going to add it here, highlighted content web part. So if I'm creating a highlighted content web part here, I can edit this web part and basically, it displays search-driven content to you. You can select the source, which is defaulted to this site, but you can se uh, select the site collection or all sites, or you can select just a couple of sites where you are interested, uh, what you are interested in. So it can uh, actually display content from all of those uh, sources. You can select the type. It can be document, it can be news, it can be everything, or tasks, or videos. Uh, and you can add additional filters like the type of the document, uh, like the title includes this, or the managed property, which you remember managed properties are the search properties in SharePoint. So you can select uh, which managed property you want to use here, and you get the point, you can add more and more filters if you want, and you will display uh, search-driven content here. However, we have some limitations. Number one, there is no search box. So we define the query with this uh, interactive uh, highlighted content web part settings uh, option, but that's all, the user cannot change it, the user cannot uh, enter his or her own query, etc. So we just display uh, search event content to the user. Number two, we cannot define how the results should be displayed. So there is no option to display our custom uh, managed properties like uh, client name or project ID or product name, service name, etc., etc. But still, this is a very useful uh, option uh, if you want to display uh, content. So this is one uh, option. Uh, classic search is still an option. Uh, but also, we have a new one, which is somewhere a kind of transition. Uh, 
between the classic and the modern way. So I have created a new page on this site. You can see the URL. I am still on the events site and I created a new page for search. <coughs> and actually what I added uh, to this page are a couple of reports. I have a search box report here. So if I enter my query for marketing, for example, uh, you can see that I got results on the right. I have refiners uh, here. Uh, and actually those refiners are basically the same as I used in the classic search, event name, event year, and even location. Uh, and you, you, I can, I can uh, change how the results are being ordered, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I can uh, turn to the next page. So I actually, I have almost the same functionality as in classic, but I am on a modern site. So how do I do this? The key to this is called PNP Modern Search. This is a collection of reports which you have to deploy to your Office 365 tenant. Um, so this is basically not there out of the box, but um, you, can, you can deploy it at any time and it gives you the feature, feature set of the classic search on a modern site. So you can add it to any of your pages. You can create your uh, custom page if you want, or you can embed it to another page. Again, this is a PMP library. So it's uh, developed by a great uh, MVP is coordinated by uh, thought leaders, MVPs, and also Microsoft uh, guys. And uh, uh, but see, uh, since it's not part of the Office 365 uh, product, the Office 365 out of the box, uh, it also re it's also really dynamic. So if you find a new bug or if you need a feature, you just uh, contact the PMP team and they will respond quite immediately and consider your question or feedback very fast and they are very dynamic. So it can be added uh, anywhere. So once again, so far I showed you the classic search as option number one, the highlighted content as an option number two, the PMP reports as option number three, and the fourth option is still just coming later uh, because as I said, uh, we still cannot uh, customize the out-of-the-box search experience in Office 365. One uh, small thing that just came to my mind, if I do a search for metadata, you can see I also have uh, suggestions here. So it is really um, really advanced. We have suggestions. You can do synonyms. Uh, you can use uh, NLP services here. So it's actually, it is, it is uh, a little bit in some cases, it's more advanced than the classic search, uh, but using uh, the graph and using uh, modern features as well. So I could talk about the PMP modern search uh, report for hours. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, time for it now, but if you have questions about it, I'm going to share the URL with you guys uh, where you can get it uh, and, and how you can deploy it. So, uh, this will be uh, added to the resources of uh, this webinar, uh, definitely. So going back to my uh, presentation, in the slide decks, I'm going to uh, send you, you will find a few uh, screenshots as well, which I'm not going through now because I showed you everything on the live demo. Uh, and uh, but, but still on those, uh, you can use those uh, screenshots for your reference and you can use them later if you want. Uh, so let me show you and let me discuss what makes everything work in Microsoft Search. So basically, when you go to the cloud, 
and when you uh, add more and more content and you start using search in most cases the plan is that you know the users will be happy this transition will be solid and and this is what every, everyone uh, planned for but instead the reality is that in many cases the users are confused i, t I told you that about a year, even about a year ago we had nine different uh, search experiences in uh, Office 365. So just imagine how confused the users were those days, but still they are still confused because modern search displays uh, the results in a different order, it's personalized, which means I get different results as you do, etc., etc. So there are so many, still so many confusions. And explaining this to the users, explaining how everything works is really hard. It's really uh, challenging. So um, this is what I would like to help you with uh, just a little bit. So some points to help you to decide how to help your users. What Microsoft Search uses and what it do actually does. Basically, Microsoft Search uses the default result source, the tenant level uh, result source. What does it mean? In practice, if you change the default tenant result source, then you change what Microsoft Search displays to the users. If you filter out content, for example, a very simple example, if you want to filter out everything that is older than two years, you can do this in the result source setting. You make your result source the default one, and from that point, Microsoft Search does not display anything that is older than two years. And you name it, you can change the query. However, uh, it is not documented yet. So we don't know the other implications. We don't know how it impacts, for example, searches on a site. If I change the default uh, result source on a site as well, and also I change the default result source on the tenant level, what the office.com uses, et cetera, et cetera. So there are still many uh, open questions. I am working on this kind of research these days, and I'm going to publish it uh, as a blog post, hopefully very soon. But you have to know that uh, this option is still open. Uh, Microsoft Search uses the default result source. Microsoft Search also uses the search schema, meaning that uh, all the managed properties that you have uh, in the default search, the classic search schema have impact on Microsoft Search. So for example, if you have a property for your products, supposing your organization is a product company. But of course, this product information is super important to your organization. So if I'm searching for the name of a product, uh, I would like to get relevant results. However, your custom properties are considered to have very low weight in the ranking model. But if you make your property searchable uh, and change uh, the weight context of this property, then it has an impact on ranking uh, your product documents higher, even in Microsoft Search and not only in Classic Search. Um, so this is another option to have an impact on the out-of-the-box uh, Microsoft Search. Also, if you create query rules on tenant level, you can promote results to the users. Uh, let me show you this very quickly. So I am, let's say I am here. This is again SharePoint home. And let me do a different search for uh, Metadata, my favorite word. Uh, 
Please. Yes, sorry, it displays it here. I have no idea why it's not uh, displaying my promoted result there, but I have a promoted result. I did a search for metadata and the promoted result says visit our website. I do have this promoted result uh, because I have created a query rule for this expression metadata and you can see the URL uh, drives the users to search explains the uh, website. And so I can use the query rules uh, to promote results as well. And also as I should use search suggestions, if I type in, uh, I get type ahead uh, suggestions and those suggestions uh, again, are the classic uh, search suggestions. So if you uh, if you load in your own list of query suggestions, they will be used by uh, modern search as well. So we have this kind of uh, kind of uh, different tricks and tips to impact search. Uh, but also we have this, what we call the paradox of content, which means if I, if I load more content, if I migrate more content to Office 365, the users expect to have better results. The truth is they get more results, but more results does not always mean better or better quality results, or more relevant results. So this is a kind of paradox. If you load more content, that does not mean better uh, search and better findability. So as I should already showed you, we have this experience in many cases when the users uh, want to locate something, they want to find something, but they are totally lost. And in many cases, when we migrate content to Office 365, uh, the users expect it to work, to work like magic, but instead, unfortunately, in most cases, if you just move the mess, mess the, uh, to Office 365, what you will have is a mess in Office 365. So be careful, be very smart. When you migrate your content, just try to keep it, keep it clean. Uh, usually what I tell to my clients uh, during a migration uh, project is that uh, just think about moving, well, what you do when you move to a new home. You organize your existing stuff into boxes based on where they should go in the new home. This box should go to the kitchen, this box goes to the main bedroom, this box goes to the living room, etc, etc. And you have a lot of things or a lot of content that you leave behind, that you do not need anymore. You can do the same, actually, when you migrate to Office 365 as well. Just have a migration plan, what to move to where in the new place, uh, and leave behind that you do not need, just archive that content, and it helps a lot with better findability. And then search can work definitely uh, better as well. So my recommendation is the number one thing that you can do to improve findability is to improve your content. Organize your content, have a clear uh, information architecture, make it clear to the users what should go where and where you store and how you store uh, the information. And then uh, it will immediately have a huge impact on content uh, findability. So to summarize those recommendations, what you do when you want to improve the content, basically you can do three different things or you can choose three different ways. Number one, keep the content as is and migrate it to Office 365. If you already have a clear information architecture and the structure how you organize your content, feel free to move it as is to Office 365. The other option, as I have mentioned, is delete the content or archive the content if you are not allowed to delete it or you don't want to delete it. Uh, and then 
you can make a decision if you want to make it findable or not uh, by search or if you want to move it into a different search vertical. And also you can keep the content but reorganize it as you migrate to Office 365. This is also a good way to improve uh, findability. And when we talk about uh, Office 365, we have so many options to organize the content and actually each of those options uh, is uh, respected by search. So the hub site, for example, the content type, uh, the name of the site where uh, the content is stored, uh, the labels, everything, everything becomes metadata in search, so you can use it for filtering, you can use it uh, in ranking, you can use it as refiners, uh, you can use it as change the order of the results, so everything, everything that is a information architecture component in Office 365 is and can be used by search. And this is super important to understand because when you uh, plan your information architecture and when you plan how you should uh, structure and organize the content, uh, you always have to consider uh, the search and you always have to uh, consider the findability, the future findability uh, of the content. But of course, you don't have to use every component, you don't have to use every feature for from this picture in Office 365. Uh, it's this decision, what features you use and what features you do not use, is also part of the planning process. And also, it's true that you do not need to use everything the same way or for every content. And what I usually recommend to my clients is to create a pyramid uh, of this uh, the pyramid of uh, the content, which means you define dif different levels of your content and for each level you define different governance, you define different information architecture uh, organizational principles. Uh, so for example, for the personal content or documents in OneDrive, you definitely don't use the same principles as you use in the corporate board or content. And on each level, you can define those rules, you can define the governance, you can define the information architecture, what you want to use, how you want to use, and more important, and also it is really important that you can define how each level can be and will be used in search. And this decision uh, really ha has to be made for each level one by one. So this is also something that uh, I would recommend to do as an exercise in your organization. But as I said, everything here becomes metadata in search. Uh, the name of the site, the name of the hub site, the content type, everything, and, and also the SharePoint columns, everything becomes metadata. So why is it that important? It is important because in search, Everything, everything is metadata. So everything you want to use, everything you want to display is metadata. Obviously, in the search box, uh, when you do a search, actually it searches in the metadata and it searches in the content uh, of the document. But what metadata it does a search in is a really important configuration. Uh, what we display here is also metadata. In this example, the type, the industry, text type and location, and also the title of the document or the URL of the document, everything is metadata. On the right side of this picture, we have related searches and related documents, and the relationship between documents is described by metadata. They share the same product, they share the same uh, terms from a taxonomy, uh, whatever the relationship is, has to be defined by you. But if you have any kind of relationship and you want to use this feature, if you want to display related searches, related documents, related whatever, you need metadata that defines uh, this relationship. And of course, refiners are also metadata. So we need a huge amount of metadata and we have to invest into planning 
the metadata the right way uh, in SharePoint, but also in Office 365. So first of all, we have to identify what we need and why we need that. And then we have to create the information architecture. Uh, we have to plan uh, where to store the content, how to store the content. We have to organize the hub sites. Uh, we have to create the content types, uh, labels, everything, everything, everything that is part of the information architecture. Once it's done, uh, then we can create the search schema. The search schema defines the search metadata in the search index. So we have to be smart about it, but we also have to uh, invest into it because this is what will be used by search uh, in the end. And once we configure search to use the search schema the right way, then we can have happy users who like search, who get benefits from search, and who really uh, know uh, how to use search and uh, what results they can expect uh, from search. So again, information architecture, organizing your content and SharePoint metadata is still important in, in Office 365 and it, it is actually becoming more and more important. Uh, although the Microsoft Graph and uh, Microsoft Search use machine learning techniques and artificial intelligence and everything, but without information architecture and without uh, well-organized content, they cannot help you as much as they are supposed to help. So what's coming? What are the next steps in Microsoft Search? To summarize, today we have many features already available in Microsoft Search. In SharePoint and OneDrive, we have suggestions as the user types in the query. And those are query suggestions. We have personalized results for everyone based on the Microsoft Graph. Uh, we have bookmarks, Q&A, and uh, locations for Microsoft Search in Bing. Uh, we have zero query suggestions. So as soon as I click into the search box, I get query suggestions as I demonstrated. Uh, in Office desktop applications, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, we already have the Microsoft search box on the top this uh, unified uh, search box. <coughs> I'm sorry. We don't have Microsoft Search in Bing. And also, uh, I did not demonstrate the administration UI of Microsoft Search, but uh, we can manage the bookmarks, Q&A, and locations for Microsoft Search. If I have any remaining time, I'm going to go back there and I'm going to show it to you. Uh, this is for Microsoft Search in Bing. Uh, and also, the, there is a search API in Microsoft Graph, which is in beta uh, today. So what's coming later this year? And uh, this is what Microsoft is committed to. So Microsoft Search in Windows means if you do a search in your Windows desktop, you will get results from your Office 365 tenant. Of course, you have to be logged in with your Office 365 account to Windows. Uh, the Microsoft Search is coming to the web applications of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, not only to the desktop applications. Uh, in SharePoint, you will be able to redirect the default search box, the default modern search box to your custom page. It can be a classic uh, search page or it can be a modern, maybe a PMP uh, page as well, whatever you prefer. Uh, we will be able to create custom refiners, custom verticals, custom result types and modern display templates uh, in modern search. So we will be able to customize the modern search and also the classic search sites will be uh, and can be upgraded to modern. So if you have classic today, but if you decide to go to modern, you will be able to upgrade your classic sites to modern uh, later uh, this year. And as I, as I uh, told you, 
uh, OneDrive will search in across all files stored in OneDrive and also in uh, SharePoint. Today it searches in OneDrive content only. Um, some more features that are coming. Search connectors, direct search connectors to Office 365. So today, if you want to connect a third party system to Office 365 search, the only way to do that is through creating a hybrid uh, environment and you add the custom connector to the SharePoint on-prem and you pull the content by SharePoint on-prem on to the uh, cloud search index and then uh, it's in your Office 365 index. Later this year, Microsoft is going to release new custom connectors and also connector APIs to Office 365 and we will be able to pull content directly to the cloud index. We will have two new search verticals in modern search. One will be videos, including stream, and the other one will be conversations, including Yammer and Teams conversations. Beyond query suggestions, we will also have bookmarks and Q&A suggestions. So instead of just query suggestions, we will see real results as suggestions, uh, our own customized results, and not only the graph-driven uh, results as the user types in the query. We will have more and more and smarter and smarter analysis uh, features for Microsoft Search, and the Search API in Microsoft Graph uh, will be uh, generally available for everyone. It is uh, in beta uh, today. So basically this is the timeline for uh, later this year in uh, Microsoft Search. All right, so many, many changes. How to be ready? Unfortunately, there is no silver bullet for, for this. So I cannot tell you do this and this and this and your users will be happy ever. Uh, but my number one recommendation is always think in phases and consider search and also your whole Office 365 environment as a product with a life cycle. So I assign version numbers to it uh, and you can improve it version by version. You can have major versions like in every year or every two years and you can have minor numbers in between and you can improve version by version. Or if you know that some updates are coming, you can communicate those updates to your users as a new minor version. For example, from 1.6, you jump to 1.7 when there's a new feature that is relevant to your users. But also if you change your customization or change your configuration of search, when you add new features, you can communicate it to your users this way. This approach has many benefits. Uh, number one is communication is much easier. You can tell your users what they can expect, not in the next release only, but also later. So if your users come to you with a new feedback, what they need, what they want, you can tell them, this is a really good feedback, thank you. We will uh, implement it in the second version from today or in six months from today. So they know what to expect. And also this way, they don't consider search as a product or a feature that is done. They consider search as an ever changing, ever improving uh, feature. And they will know that their feedback is really uh, valuable and you consider the feedback. So it's much easier. And last but not least, it's easier for budgeting because in many cases, what I can see with my clients is that their budget, uh, some resources for search for a specific amount of time, like six months, be sorry, because they consider search to be a one-time project, but after that search is left alone and nobody uh, nobody cares about, nobody improves it anymore. However, with all those changes and also your environment changes, your 
uh, content change uh, changes the users uh, needs change so you definitely need this more agile uh, uh, approach and it's much easier to get a budget for uh, each version uh, this way so this would be my primary recommendation for user adoption but also collect feedbacks from your users formally and informally uh, have a communication plan have an internal marketing plan for example i have a client and they literally posted paper posters everywhere in the office before uh, they launched a uh, search on their internet and when i say everywhere you really can imagine it everywhere. So, and, and th th those are very simple posters like, uh, did you know how to search for these? Did you know how to use refiner? Did you know that we have six different verticals? Of course, they did not use these word verticals, but did you know that you can search in knowledge base? You can search in the news, you can search for people, etc., etc. And they put all those paper posters on the waiters, in the reception area of the company, also in the toilets. Uh, so the users got those uh, messages all the time, even before uh, the release of search and also after the release, the release of search. Uh, therefore, they were prepared, they were excited about it, and they knew how to provide feedback and who to provide feedback to. So basically, this is what I wanted to show you uh, today. And I can see we have a couple of uh, questions. So I am switching to the Q&A uh, uh, for now. Cool, we have a lot of questions, great. So um, Microsoft Graph API only supports uh, searching limited SharePoint content like sites. Will the graph support all the SharePoint content in the near feature? Uh, it was a question from Chris. Uh, my understanding is that yes, uh, this is what uh, they are working on these days. However, I am not a developer, so I cannot tell you the exact details, but my understanding is that yes, it will be uh, much smarter and much more uh, advanced. Um, and the next question is, are folders still bad in Office 365? I would not say folders are bad. It's not a black and white uh, thing. I still use folders, uh, not nested, deep nested folder structure. But for example, in my demo, you could see that I use folders for each year uh, in, my, in the case of my events. Uh, the folder structure is still a natural way for the users to navigate to the content and to organize their content. And if you combine it with a good metadata structure, and also uh, if you uh, combine it with a good information architecture, maybe a good taxonomy, I would not say folders are bad. Uh, you have to use them smart and you have to teach your users to use it smart um for example from the perspective of search uh, if you create folders the name of the folder by default does not add any metadata to search so you cannot use it the name of the folder as a metadata by default it, you have to use some uh, other tricks and workarounds but uh, i would not say it's bad i would say you have to use it smart um Okay, so next question. Does the search results have information based on GDPR requirements? Information handled based on GDPR requirements? Uh, I am not sure what you mean here, handled based on GDPR requirements. I suppose that uh, you don't want to display any uh, sensitive information maybe on search results. Um, I'm not sure about the out of the box. I mean, the modern search, uh, what, uh, I have, haven't tested it, to be honest. 
uh, for uh, GDPR. Uh, in classic, you can define your own uh, display templates and how you display and uh, what you display those uh, sensitive information. Uh, but uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, it is uh, possible because GDPR is considered that so many other places in opposition to 365, I would be surprised if, if it would not be considered uh, here. Did you share the filters? Panel, we'd like to see the filters based on the Kanban. And could we create custom filters and definers? And what about scopes? So, uh, as I said uh, today, um, the only way to create uh, filters is with using uh, the PMP. Uh, the PMP web parts. Here in, uh, in the default uh, modern search, we cannot create custom filters. However, we will be able to do that uh, later this year. If you want to see how uh, this really works, it's the, uh, it, it would take uh, a long time. Actually, I can show it uh, briefly in uh, just a second. So this is my uh, filtering web format. I can define the styling of it and I can edit the refiners here. So I have the event here, event location and event name uh, connected to refinable, uh, refinable uh, managed properties. Uh, Question from Tom. Context sensitive search is great, but only if the users are aware that their searches are limited to the scope of where they are. I totally agree with you, Tom. Uh, scopes in fast allow the users to know the scope of their search and be expand their scope to site, multiple sites, collection, talent, etc. Is modern search going to inform users about the scope of their search and allow the flexibility to expand the scope? Uh, as of today, uh, it does not inform the users. So this is why user education is super important to show them uh, and teach them uh, that it is context sensitive. It does not show it. Uh, actually, if I go to, uh, if I go here and do search here on this site, and I do this uh, search on this side. Um, I don't have any indication of where I am except this one. I am on the event side. If I switch back here, you can see I am here. So basically, if I click on organization, I'm actually expanding the search for everything. And boom, you can see my uh, promoted result is displayed here. But you have to definitely teach the users that they have to click on this organization. But there are no options to expand to, as you say, to multiple sites or just a site collection, etc., etc. This is just, uh, you can expand it to the whole uh, tenant level. How to get rid of? ASPX in the site search results? This is a question from Ram. Uh, Ram, you can uh, add uh, into the result source definition. You can add an additional query and the uh, name of the managed properties called file extension and you can filter for ASPX. And if you add this little minus before, that means you exclude the ASPX uh, files from search results. Uh, question from Tom, again, dependence on being, we really require a behavior change for those who have grown comfortable with Google. Absolutely agree. What are the Microsoft's plans to achieve functional parity with Google and privacy parity with Dr. Go? I have no idea, to be honest with you. I really don't know. So I agree with your question. And this is what I see with most of my clients. Uh, most people, most organizations see 
this is to be the number one challenge uh, to switch the users to start using Bing and not Google or DuckDuckGo, as you say. Uh, question from question from Daniel. Uh, you told at the start about 20 million record limit. Does it bring data in batches? Does the threshold exist for BCS or, or uh, search results? Uh, that is the on-prem limit only, the 20 million, or 10 million in case of SharePoint 2013. But that is per index partition. So if you have more items than 10 million or 10, 20 million, then you can create more uh, index partitions. So it can be scaled absolutely very fine, much over uh, over that limit. Um, question from Mike. Will we ever have the ability to replicate the content enrichment web service in SharePoint Online? I have replicated it using Azure Search, but I am hoping that Microsoft Search may provide this in the future. Uh, I, I have no news about it, unfortunately, and, and I haven't seen any any updates uh, coming about it. Question from Daniel. Is there a PowerShell module we can use to audit the common search queries users enter and or add predefined suggestions? Be good not to have on reliance site means to download the site usage CSV files. Uh, not yet. What we know is that Microsoft and I showed you on the last slide that uh, Microsoft is working on new analytics features, but there is no any more information about what it will be, how it will be, and what we will be able to do uh, with that. Uh, question from Han. How did you create a specific search page? Uh, I have created this uh, search page. Actually, this is just a add a new page to this modern site and then I added all the PMP uh, PMP web parts. So this is just a modern search page. Uh, not, nothing special about the page itself. Uh, can I search on-prem from Office Online? Yes, you can if you create a hybrid environment and you provide your content to the cloud uh, search index. Later this year, this is a question from Hans again, what does this mean, whether September, October, or November, December? No official information about it, uh, and I would not, I really would not like to guess on it, so sorry. This is the official uh, communication, and I have no, nothing else to share with you. Uh, so, question from Lisa. So right now, Microsoft Search will return all content, whether you have permissions or not, no trimming. Uh, it must be a misunderstanding, Lisa, because everything, everything is security trimmed. So if you do have permission to something, you can find it. But if you do not have permission to a document, there is no way you can find it. So it, in this meeting, it works as uh, the same way as the classic. There is secret trimming. Casper, uh, any improvements in the time it takes to get the mapping for managed metadata to take effect? It took 36 hours last week. Well, wow, 36 hours is really a long time. Uh, they are working on it. So Microsoft is really working on it. Usually it takes much shorter time. Uh, on my tenants, and I use at least four or five different tenants, uh, it takes only a few minutes. So I would come in, uh, my recommendation would be to contact the uh, uh, Microsoft support team because there must be something wrong with your tenant. Uh, another question from Casper, any suggestion how to segregate the content in archives? No display by default and current stuff. Uh, if you use modern, I would uh, change the default result source to display the current and live stuff only. Uh, as I said, 
there is no way to create custom verticals as of today in, uh, in the out-of-the-box modern search center. So I would somehow combine uh, the default one with custom search pages to where the default one would display only the live and current content and the custom search pages could be used to display uh, archive content. Uh, a question from Matt. From the search in the suite bar, people scope that does not show up. It does not show, it does show there is office.com search. Do you know why Microsoft did not make them match? And if there are any plans for that people tab to show from the suite bar search, uh, so there is no people here, but if I do a search from office.com, there is people uh, search. Uh, I have no idea when they, when it will match, uh, but actually, as I said, the goal, the whole goal of Microsoft search is providing more consistent user experience. So I'm pretty sure it will be uh, there sooner or later, but I have no timeline for that. Question from Robert. We have moved to hybrid uh, where Office 365 is serving as enterprise search for Office 365 content plus on-prem SharePoint and other on-prem content. Uh, where is the things you lost? Where was we no longer for transforming crud metadata from uh, on-prem servers? The question is if Microsoft has any plan to restore those features for a hybrid integration to get you closer to an actual enterprise type search set of features. Um, to be honest, I have not heard uh, anything about improving the hybrid search and adding a, uh, any <clears throat> Uh, missing or lost features to hybrid. It might come in, but I, I don't have any information about it. Uh, when we can expect the refiners as a train modern? Uh, as I said, it's coming later this year. I don't have any uh, more or further details about the exit uh, dates. Uh, search metrics reporting question from Robert for the search on graph. Uh, the only thing we know about it is they are working on providing better metrics and better analytics uh, information, but uh, that's all that we know uh, as of uh, as of today. Uh, And the question, the last question in the Q&A box that I can see right now is from the one earlier for an on-prem installation, you use Google Analytics to identify search terms and popular search metadata. Uh, yes, you can use it. You can still use uh, Google Analytics. Uh, okay, and I can see messages in the chat window as well. That was all in the Q&A window. Uh, many thank you messages. Uh, thank you uh, all. Um, whew, I have literally a lot of, lot of questions, but we are running out of time. So uh, I went through all the questions in the Q&A. Uh, I would like to recommend uh, that uh, I'm going to answer uh, all your questions, additional questions in the chat window by email. So in the next 24 hours, you can expect an email from me with all the slides that I uh, shared with you today, uh, with all the resources, including the PMP Modern Search uh, URL, and also uh, the recording will be shared with you guys, and, and also I'm going to answer uh, the questions that I still can see coming and coming in the in the chat window. So thank you very much for today. I hope it was useful for you. If you have any remaining questions at any time, just uh, drop me an email, and I will be more than happy to more than happy to help you. Thank you and.
have a wonderful rest of the day.